Hello my angels, welcome back to the YouTube channel and welcome back to a brand new vlog. Now this one is going to be super spooky and just quite honestly absolutely hilarious. I think I am going to provide a good old giggle for you all. I will most certainly be laughing with you. So this is going to be a Halloween extravaganza. We are going to a Halloween party this evening and as Laura put it herself, no costume, no entry. <laughs> so they are compulsory and trust me when I say these outfits ideas are absolutely hysterical. I am talking next level. So that is basically what you are going to see. Laura and her boyfriend have gone all out with the decorations. The party is being hosted at their house, which is um, very, very generous of them. As you know, we like to throw a lot of parties. So it's really, really nice to actually be hosted for a change, but, I am making all the canapes. So they are doing all the drinks and the cocktails and the sort of like mocktails, champagne, we're gonna do margaritas. I have in fact actually got some syringes and I've made some fresh raspberry Kool-Aid which is going to look like blood and then you can inject the blood into the champagne glasses. I know it sounds revolting. It's all going to look revolting, but trust me, it will taste delicious. And seems as I am in charge of canapes, quite frankly, we're going all out. Why would we not? So I've put some time aside this afternoon. It is five past two and I have got really quite a lot to make. And so I thought I would make it with you, give you guys some ideas as to Halloween canapes. And uh, yeah, just thought we would have some fun together. So first things first, I've had this idea. It's actually something that I saw on Instagram. It looks absolutely hideous, but I'm loving the idea. So basically, I have got myself some parchment paper and a pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outline of my hand. I'm going to use cheese sticks as the fingers, and then I'm going to create like a really delicious goat's cheese with some herbs, some garlic, lovely parsley, all of that shebang to almost create like a little bit of like a cheese dip that people could have on a cracker but I'm going to wrap it in palm ham so it literally looks like a dead hand and then people can like chop off a finger, pop it on like a little fig biscuit and eat it. So that is one uh, canopy. So it's literally going to look like my dead arm. Yes. And then the star of the show is of course going to be a pumpkin. So what I've done is I've actually outlined his facial features and I'm going to carve his eyes as triangles and then I'm actually going to carve his mouth sort of like really rather wide open. And you guys have actually seen me make guacamole before. It is really a bit of a family secret recipe and everybody adores it. So it was the first thing Laura asked me to make was my guacamole. And what I thought I could do, again, something that I saw on Instagram is a pumpkin. Oh, it sounds so vulgar and revolting, but he's basically, um, uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this on my YouTube channel, but like vomiting out the guacamole and I'm going to put all the crisps around the edge. Honestly, I know you're probably like, Leonora, what are you doing? But trust the process because it's going to look epic. And then I'm doing my crudité basket. Now, all of you have seen my crudité basket before. It is a little bit of a showstopper, which I love. And you can sort of create almost like the canopy table. And it's really that masterpiece that sits in the middle of the table. And then what else are we doing? I'm doing cheese straws that are going to look like fingers. What else do we have? I think that's just about it. So we've got quite a lot to get on with. I need to get ready because I'm going to Laura's at about half past five just to set up all the canopy so it's all ready for when her guests arrive. And um, then of course I'm going to be getting dressed with you. I'm not going to give away our outfits just yet because I don't want to spoil the surprise. And trust me when I say you are going to be crying with laughter. I have also got some extremely special guests staying this weekend. Monica, you have 
haven't met before and she's been on my YouTube channel many, many times and she's also one of my dearest friends. And Halloween is her favorite time of year. And trust me, they bring their A-game. So Monica and her husband are arriving in a couple of hours and Monica will not tell me what she's going as this evening, but she has told me that she spent the entire week creating her outfit out of paper mache and she may need a six-seater or a transit van to get to the party. I can't actually cope. Her voice notes give me life in the morning. She's just the most hilarious human being. She's honestly like a little Duracell bunny. She's hysterical and I cannot wait to see what she's wearing. Marcus is going as something that is just hysterical. My brother and his girlfriend have got epic outfits. Laura and her boyfriend oh, is going to be just insane. So I cannot wait to share all of these insane outfits. I think what I'm gonna do first is create the dead hand, just because I want it to sit in the fridge for a few hours and really sort of set. And I've had an idea as to put one of my dress rings on one of the fingers. I think that will look really funny. Or we could like chop the finger off or something horrific. Um, so I'm going to create that first. So. Let's get straight into this. I'm going to have to chop my head off for this part, but as you can see, I've got a little bit of parchment paper and I've got myself a pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline my hand and I'm going to use that so that I can then use the cheese sticks as the fingers. And then I'm going to create a delicious, to move that up slightly, I'm going to bring it down my forearm. There we go. Oh, this is going to look insane. Oh my goodness, I've done a terrible job of my wrist. <laughs> my wrist looks very skinny. Okay, we're going to have to make that look slightly more human-like. Why does that look so skinny? Okay, I'm going to move that out a bit. Okay. So my wrist doesn't look so skinny. I could even put a bracelet on it. Okay. So that is the outline of my hand done. And I have got, you know when you were children and you had cheese strings? I don't think many people are going to eat the fingers. They're obviously gonna eat the main part of the hand and most certainly the wrist and the arm. Okay, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cheese strings <laughs> I always used to have these in like my packed lunches. I haven't had one of these in forever. Do you remember those? Gosh, what fun. Okay, so I'm literally going to use these as my fingers. I'm gonna use that one there. Hopefully that can be my thumb. Yeah, I think that's a good size for my thumb. I must say I've got some very dodgy looking fingers. <laughs> very knobbly, very knobbly knuckles. Okay, so this one is going to be slightly longer. There we go. I'm going to have to have some random mm, bit of cheese. Mm. Okay, it's just as plasticky as I remember. <laughs> God knows what's in these. Mm. Right, need a middle finger. Woo, it's got a long middle finger. Okay. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I cannot wait for everybody to see these. I really hope it's gonna turn out as well as I think it is. Okay, so that is my, my fingers done. Oh no, you can't see. Hang on a moment. Right, I'm gonna to have to put you like this. And where is that garlic clove? There we go. I have moved you slightly just so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've got the cheese sticks as my fingers. And then what I'm using is the goat's cheese. Now this is fresh and it's smooth and spreadable goat's cheese. And I am going to create a delicious goat's cheese dip. And it's going to act as the center of our ham. If I can actually open this, I need myself a knife. Okay. So here we have the center of the hand. And I'm just going to see whether I can 
mold it. I think what I may do is get this looking perfect because I think this is going to be a little bit messy and might take me a little while. So I'm going to pop you on a time lapse and come back and show you hopefully our hand all ready for the palmer ham to be placed and tucked over the top and then it will really start to look like a real hand. Okay, so as you can see, the hand is constructed. Also, please, please make sure that you wash your hands extremely well before you start this or wear a glove, just because obviously it is quite messy and we are using our hands to create it. And also it needs to be hygienic because the main part of this, people are going to eat, I hope. Um, and also you don't want to have sort of like goat's cheesy fingers. Um, and once you've finished constructing it, please wash your hands again because we are going to use some delicious parma ham and we are now going to make it look like a dead hand. Okay, so let's open up this parma ham. I also want to season my goat's cheese slightly. So as you know, I think cooking is all about the seasoning. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, yum, mm, delish. I'm thinking a tiny bit of chili underneath there. Oh, here we go, lovely. So that is that. And now what I'm gonna do is just lay the palm ham just over the top and tuck it in underneath that, there we go, underneath that goat's cheese, so that it literally looks as though somebody's hand and arm has been chopped off. Charming, charming, charming. So here we go, next little sliver. Just make sure that that is covering all of that goat's cheese. Tuck it underneath on this side. It needs another little piece here. I've got my sous chefs underneath me because <laughs> they can smell the parma ham. They are so naughty. I've got three Arga slugs and then a little mm, beggar underneath here. You can count on Odie if there's ever any food. He's there, ready and waiting in the wings. Okay, this is really starting to come together. Okay, so it took me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but my hand is ready. And look at this. So I have, please excuse the mess. I've used the cheese straws as fingers, and then you've got that goat's cheese here. And then I have literally just layered it with parma ham so that people can in fact chop the fingers off and eat the cheese straws or the gorgeous goat's cheese that is underneath. And I've also bought these cheese crackers. Now these are pumpkin and sunflower seed sourdough crackers. They're absolutely delicious. My plan is, is just to place them around the edge. And then I think I'm gonna put the knife at the end of the arm and possibly just put a tiny bit of red food coloring so it looks like blood. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm really invested now. I've got really, really into it. Now I'm going to create my little cheese twists that are going to look like snakes. I then need to get started with the guacamole. I'm gonna carve the pumpkin first and then I'm going to share my famous guacamole recipe with you. And then there's one more thing. Oh, the credit 
crudité basket. We are going to be creating this crudité basket together. But to be honest with you, it's all about the prep. So I'm going to chop up all the vegetables, possibly just put them into sandwich bags, and then actually build the entire basket at Laura's. So I've got about an hour and a half. I've got quite a lot to do. So let's keep going. I actually just can't get over this hand. It looks so realistic. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just keep these in their wrappers for now. I'm gonna cling film it and then, oh, should I do that? No, I think actually what I'm gonna do is keep these here and just make sure that I put them into a bag so that it can all go to Laura's and then I will really just construct everything once we get there because I do need to transport my dead hand. So I'm just gonna get myself some cling film. We're gonna cling this and pop it in the fridge so it just stays fresh. There we go, fantastic. And then we're going to get started with our cheese twists. Now moving on to the next canapé that we're gonna be making. It is going to be cheese twisted straws with black sesame seeds. And I'm hoping that they are going to look like little snakes, but they're also going to taste absolutely delicious. So in terms of ingredients, you just need shop-bought puff pastry, but if you want it to taste extremely good, then you can make the puff pastry yourself. Now I've literally just used the Just Roll ready to roll puff pastry sheet. So I'd highly recommend them. They're very easy. And also make sure that when you buy these, I'd buy the fresh version. So don't buy the frozen. Otherwise you'll need to wait a few hours for it to defrost. So I have two sheets here. So I've got the bottom sheet and then I'm actually going to use another sheet and lay it on top. I've got grated parmigiano and I've also got some grated, very mature cheddar. It's with everything. The better the ingredients that you use, the more delicious that it will taste. So I definitely recommend in investing in a really delicious, rich, creamy, um, mature cheddar. So it's really as simple as this. We're going to just sprinkle the cheese on. Now it's important not to do too much, otherwise you'll have that cheese sort of oozing out of the edges. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but we want sort of to be light and crispy and for that pastry just to puff up. And then we are going to sprinkle the Parmigiano on the top. If you can hear John blowing in the background, it is driving me <laughs> as insane as I'm sure it's driving you. I'm so sorry, but this time of year, there are leaves for days. Right, okay, so I would say that that is enough. I'd eyeball it. You know, I'll leave um, my recipe down below, but really, as you can see, just use your eyeballs, common sense, give a little bit of a sprinkle, and there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the second sheet over the top, like so, and voila, you take that paper, off of the top, fan it happy dozy, and then what I'm going to do is give it a tiny bit more parmesan on the top, like so. And then what you can do is either get a rolling pin and just actually roll the parmesan in, or you can just use your hands and pat down quite firmly. And that just ensures that that Parmesan is really inside that pastry. And then all we need to do, I told you it was super simple, is actually just make our cheese straw section. So I'm gonna take a knife and literally just, I'd say about that much on the end. As you just saw, we've just sectioned them and then I've actually cut them in half. So next step is to literally twiddle them like so. And then when they cook, they will look fantastic. So I'm going to literally just lay that on my baking tray. I have lined it in a parchment paper. I'm gonna quickly do this because I feel like you guys are gonna get a little bit bored of me twiddling pastry. <laughs> and then I will show you what they look like on the baking tray. We're then going to paint on a tiny bit of egg yolk. And this is going to actually make the sesame seeds stick as well as make them look super glossy when we cook them. 
was gonna say bake them, but cook them. Cook them, bake them, whatever we're doing, it's gonna make them look better. All glossy and gorgeous. So I am going to actually probably put you on a time lapse. So I will shut up and I will see you in a moment. So my cheese straws, or my cheese snakes, I should say, are ready. Well, I've twiddled them, and I've actually got really rather a few more than I was expecting. So I've got one, two, three, four trays of um, cheese snakes. And now I've got my little paintbrush with my egg yolk, and I'm literally just going to paint across the top of them. They can look a little bit messy because obviously you've got a little bit of cheese on there. But this is going to make them super glossy. And then what I'm going to do is sprinkle the sesame seeds over the top and then actually just sprinkle a touch more parmesan. And then they are going to taste absolutely delicious. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time painting the egg yolk on. And then I will come back and show you what they look like before they go in the oven. Now, the good thing about cheese straws is that they can be prepared um, in advance. See, I'm trying to get all of this done so that actually I can spend a little bit of time getting myself ready. Although, to be honest with you, I'm going to look so hideous that it's actually not going to take me that long at all. I'm also hoping that my outfit fits me because bit silly, I haven't in fact even tried it on yet, so I'm really hoping this dress fits, um, otherwise we are going to have to think really rather quickly as to another outfit, but anyway, I'm going to manifest that it's going to fit to perfection, okay, here we go, right, so a couple of years ago, one of actually my brother's friends used to take the mick out of Mark, looking like this particular character, and he used to get really upset by it. And then I thought, Do you know what, it's so silly, why don't you just lean into it? We're going to go as that person to Halloween, and it is absolutely hysterical. He's also got quite a few of the items already um, that sort of finishes the outfit off to perfection, that kind of, you know, not a, not a huge amount of people would have. Um, gives you a bit of a clue. So you guys are going to see Mark <laughs> Marcus in a very, very tight pair of leggings um, and some riding boots, you know, have a little guess. I'm not giving it away just yet. Right, I probably need to, uh, in fact, crack another egg and get a yolk and I'm just going to go and paint my cheese straws that are just over there. So back in a jiffy. Okay, so that is the egg wash all done. I'm now gonna take my black sesame seeds and just sprinkle them over the top and they are going to stick to that egg yolk, I hope. And any other extras, don't worry about it. It isn't going to, that is Monica. Should we see what she's saying? I'm so intrigued as to what Monica is wearing. What do you think, what can you make out of paper mache? I'm thinking she's gonna be like a giant spider. I know she's gone as a lobster one year. I mean, they are dedicated. And also they do like couple outfits. So they'll go as like the same movie characters or they're just so good. One year they were a pair of lobsters. Then what else did they go as? They went as like Chucky characters, which was absolutely frightening. Right, okay, that is our sesame seeds all done. And then we are going to just sprinkle a touch more Parmesan on. I've been a little bit lazy and I've bought already grated Parmesan. But as you can see, I'm a little bit stressed for time. I've got exactly one hour to chop all of the vegetables for the crudité basket, to create the guac, and to carve the um, pumpkin. So, you know what, with a fair whack, we can get this done. So these are now ready for the oven. I really hope they're going to taste as good as they look. Right, I think that is plenty. Pop that there. Hmm. So excited! 
Okay, so just to give you a little bit of a close up, I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I bringing that? That one I could bring, ah, oh, you over here. So this is what our twisted cheese straws look like. So we have two layers of that puff pastry. We have then popped in the Parmesan and the mature cheddar. I've laid the second sheet of pastry over the top. We've egg washed it and sprinkled Parmesan and those black sesame seeds. And they are ready for the oven. And those are our cheese straws in the oven. And fingers crossed, they are going to cook to perfection. I now need to have a serious tidy, prepare all the vegetables and carve this pumpkin. So I'm gonna actually prepare the vegetables on a time lapse because you all know how to chop vegetables and really it's all about putting it together. So I will share that with you step by step at Laura's house. And then I will come back and we're gonna carve this pumpkin together. Our cheese snakes are ready and look at how fantastic they look. They are golden and they have risen, well they have puffed I should say. So they are looking absolutely fantastic. Just going to place them on the top of the agar just so that they can cool. And the very last tray, here we go. <gasps> Boys, what do you think? Excuse my wellies, I left them out in the rain. So currently trying to dry them. Gosh, talk about multitasking. Okay, so I have chopped up all of the vegetables and popped them into little sandwich bags. And then actually I've just packed a load of Waitro bags with everything that I am going to need. I've also made myself a large coffee. Mm because I feel that I need it. Actually, in all honesty, this was an espresso that I made earlier, and I've actually popped some ice cubes in here and a little bit of cold water. Mm. All it needs is actually a dash of vodka and we'd be having a uh, espresso martini. It seems as it's 10 to five and I'm really running behind. Mm. I cannot start on the old vodka just yet. So, I've got myself a pumpkin and let's start carving it. So, I'm literally just going to Stab my knife in, gosh, and just take out those eyes. See whether they'll come out nicely. I used a pen just to, ooh, it came out perfectly. Look at that. And then I'm hoping I can get myself a sponge and just wipe off that ink. Because I don't think that's nothing worse where you can actually see, oh gosh, where you've gone with the pen and just oh, ease his eyeball out. Gosh, it looks fantastic already. Eek! I don't know whether to actually take the lid off, scoop it out and actually pop a light in the middle. What do we think? So he's essentially gonna look as though he is um, <laughs> vomiting the guacamole. <laughs> so ladylike. Um, so do we think that he should be lit up inside? Hmm, I'm not sure. Right, let's get his mouth going. <laughs> Gonna make him look as though he's happily, happily throwing up, if there is such a thing. Oh, gosh. There we go, it's coming out. Ah, look at it. Okay, I think I am going to have to scoop out the middle just because we want him to look as though he is really sort of like opening up his mouth. He currently looks as though he is smiling at the moment. We need him to look a little bit more upset than that. Okay, I'm just gonna carve this slightly more. I don't want to ruin him. I can sometimes get a touch too excited. <laughs> I feel like you all know that by now. <sighs> okay, well, I would say I'm quite happy with that. What do you think? I mean, it's not a masterpiece. People are not going to be calling me Picasso anytime soon. However, do we scoop out the middle? I'm gonna take myself a little teaspoon and then I think I'm just going to literally just tease out a few of those seeds. And actually, I think it's something that I don't really need to do. I think it's a job that 
you know, not many people are going to see. And I think it's more important to get going with the old guacamole and make sure that it is, is as sensational as ever. Ooh, this is little bottom. Well, I'm quite happy with that. I'm sort of thinking I can like pop a tiny bit of the guacamole from inside the mouth, like so, and then it's gonna come out all onto a beautiful platter. Okay, well, I'm really rather happy with that. Let's start making this guacamole. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Oh! I've got the water running, sunglasses on, <laughs> a metal spoon in my mouth, and then look at my eyes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm rushing. My eyes are crying. I also need to have a shower. I was hoping I could do a full face of fresh makeup, but by this point, I think I'm actually going to. Uh, I have to just put a touch more on and go, go like so. Right, I'm well on my way with the guacamole. I've just chopped up the ugh, red onions, which are actually just gonna go straight in. Gosh, probably a la little bit of Leonora snot. Mmm, delish. I am joking, by the way. Oh my goodness, gracious me. So that is the red onions in the bowl. I have a ridiculous amount of avocados here. I am making guacamole for 40 people. I haven't actually oh, made guacamole for 40 people before. I think it's a little bit extreme. Um, probably won't be enough for everybody, but not everybody likes avocados, so I'm hoping that will be okay. So I'm now just going to scoop out all of my avocados. And then I'm going to chop up super finely cherry tomatoes, put a little bit of chili in there, we're gonna put coriander, we're gonna put lime, not my snot, I promise. Oh, sniveling, I'm so sorry, but I promise you it's from those onions. Oh, here we go, okay, right, that is that. Now what I like to do is actually just take my knife and just chop up those avocados. I don't like guacamole that's like super pureed. I just don't think it tastes very nice and I don't really like the consistency. I love a chunky guac. So I'm just taking my knife and just chopping up that avocado into really, really small chunks. And then I'm going to my cherry tomatoes. I'm just gonna go off and wash them first, along with my hands. And then we are going to chop them up very, very finely together and add them into our guac mixture. I think it actually needs a touch more red onion. So sadly, the glasses oh, are gonna have to go back on. I do actually have a little bit of onion here that I used the other evening. So it's actually not a super fresh onion and hopefully it's not going to give me a hard time with my eyes. So I've got about 45 minutes until I actually need to leave. Yeah, so I've got a touch more to do and I need to just ensure that I've got all my bits and pieces that I need to assemble my crudite basket. So I need quite a few different tea towels and I need the actual basket itself. Gosh, look at how ridiculous I look. These are my dog walking glasses. <laughs> Very big and buggy and also they're mirrored. So um, <laughs> people can't see my eyes underneath. Oh goodness gracious me, it's where my dogs are being so badly behaved. Hopefully nobody can recognize me. Oh my goodness me, so silly, so silly. So I'm just actually adding a touch more red onion, as I said, I'm trying to make sure that it's not too chunky. There's nothing worse than getting a whole mouthful of raw onion, is there? So that is going in there. I'm then going to be seasoning it seriously well. We need lashings of Tabasco. Now I think 
not very healthy, but when it comes to guacamole, you need lots of salt. That is what really gets it tasting absolutely sensational. Also, another key is not to try to mix it too much. I've actually mixed it a touch too much myself because I really, really don't like that sort of super pureed uh, texture. Consistency. I have a cherry tomato myself. Do a little bit of tidying up because I've got a whole heap of tidying up and 45 minutes to do a full face of makeup, finish the guac, get everything together, get in the car, put my outfit on, welcome the guests and go to the party. Oh, and I've managed to get my dress stuck in the bed. Mmm, wonderful. Right, maybe I've had too much coffee today. Hmm. Goodness gracious me. Oh, I have also not excused my rollers. I don't know whether to go with this wig or not. It looks so awful, so I thought I'd just be prepared that I could just take the pins out of my own hair and that my hair would look good. Right, let's season up this guacamole. We need salt, pepper, we need chili flakes. We need fresh coriander, it's really what makes it. And then we need a lot of lime juice. So I'm really going in big with the salt. A little bit of chili, some black pepper. I'm gonna go and find myself some Tabasco. Here we go, with the Tabasco. Give it a little bit of a shake, rattle and roll. I have officially lost it. So, you know, be generous with the Tabasco. That is if you do like a little bit of a kick. If you don't, then you don't have to add it in. So I'm just gonna give that a good old stir. There we go. And then we need some lime juice. My limes are actually, in fact, a little bit hard. So a little trick what you can do is, ooh, <laughs> a little bit of trick. You can just roll your lime. It loosens up that juice. And I'm actually going to do half a lime in here. It will also stop it from going brown. And that is going to taste insane. So I've made an absolute mess, but I have made the most heavenly. Let's give it a little bit of a taste test. Mm. Okay, I need some more salt. We need more chili flakes. We definitely need more Tabasco. Can't even taste it. Boom, 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 boom. And we need the final, final ingredient that is going to make it. And something that I need to take with me is coriander. So let's chop that up finely. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my guacamole finished. Get myself a clean spoon, just because I licked that one. Mm. Okay, let's mix this in and then see what it tastes like. Oh, I really wish I didn't chop it up so finely. It's going a little bit mushier than I would have hoped but hopefully it's going to taste nice. Mmm, okay. For me, that's good. You know, Mark isn't great with spice, so, you know, if I was making this for my brother, he would be, add more chili, add more chili. Actually add fresh chili, which is absolutely scrumptious. But you know, 40 people, there are gonna be, there are gonna be some that don't like chili, so we wanna ensure that, mm, it's good for everyone. Okay. We are going to cling this and I'm going to find a platter that is going to look fan tabby dozy. And then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge until I'm ready to rock and roll. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my famous guacamole. Don't tell too many people, but this will rock your world. <laughs> I promise you that. Oh, it's so scrumptious. Okay, what else do I need? I need a little bit of coriander for the top of it once we get there. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. So I'm actually just gonna tuck that in there just so I've got it when I get there. Okay, I'll tell you what I could actually do is put a couple of fresh chilies. Oh, I think that looks fantastic. Just for design. 
Okay, put him in there too. Okay, well that is our guacamole and our pumpkin finish. And as I said, I'll put it all together with you at Laura's. In the meantime, I'm just gonna pack everything up that I need to take. I'm also gonna take some margaritas because Minky and Margs is back together. That is me and Monica. And uh, we will be having our fair share of margaritas this evening. Okay, right, I will see you in a little bit. <sighs> I've taken 15 minutes to get ready, and this is the outfit of the evening. <laughs> I look ridiculous. So if you haven't guessed it already, I am Princess Fiona from Shrek. Mark is going as Lord Farquaad. Honestly, I'm dying, I'm absolutely dying. Anyway, remind me never to dye my hair red, or cut bangs because it does not suit me. But this is the outfit of the evening. I've got the little tiara, which is just hilarious. Little green Van Cleef earrings because we need to jazz it up. This hideous dress and a pair of Valentino rock stud shoes. <laughs> All the canapes are out, the crudité basket is out. A few guests have arrived, but the house is looking insane. Laura and Sam have done the most incredible job. I'm feeling like an utter silly billy in this hair and the tiara. But anyway, I definitely fit in. There are some mega outfits already. And Marcus has in fact just FaceTimed me and I have literally laughed out loud. He is hysterical. But anyway, let's take a little look and walk through Laura's beautiful home. However, it's looking very scary, horrifically scary. There are mummies, there are things hanging, there are cobwebs everywhere. It looks amazing. Here we go. This looks absolutely insane. You've got the pumpkin keep out tape. Everybody's going to have to jump over that. And then in we come. Does this not look insane? You've got the skeletons. You've got the pumpkins. You've got this awful looking mummy situation. The cobwebs going up the grand staircase. This looks absolutely insane. No entry and then through to the kitchen of dreams. The team are in here. We've already got some fantastic outfits. Here we are, Ben is here. Ben, what have you gone as? Um, <laughs> we're, we're not quite sure, are you? Um... Actually, was a badminton coach. Oh, a badminton coach? Yeah, but look at those fine coach. legs, my I good God. I play a lot of badminton. Oh my goodness, you might break the internet, but there, Ben. <laughs> so here we have the champagne set up with those insane little injections. Does that not look epic? Then we've got some revolting looking green punch. All of the alcohol here. I see a bit of Lille, very proud. And then we have Laura. Laura, look at this sexy minx. Peaky blinders, oh, beautiful. Then we have this little guest here who I think has been here for a rather long time. And then of course, the canopy table of dreams. So this is how our pumpkin, our vomiting pumpkin turned out. You've got the <laughs> guacamole there, the tortilla chips. Then you've got this mega crudité basket. Our dead hand, that <laughs> looks so disgusting, but will be delicious. And then I have positioned the cheese twists like so, so people can take them at their own danger in case they fall down. Oh, but tonight is going to be insane. Look at this sexy dead bride! She's actually 
the bride in six weeks time. Oh my goodness. So she taught me through your outfit. Actually, pretty little thing. Pretty little thing. I'm loving the stockings. It's got a little veil. Oh, look at that. So sweet. You've even got a knife in there. Oh, yeah. Oh. I know I killed my husband. <laughs> It's a bit of an operation, right? Monica has spent an entire week creating her outfit out of paper mache. Also want to add that we have driven this evening and we are getting taxis home um, before anybody starts to get upset. I can't wait for no, this. Oh, I have to stay here. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. This girl is officially crazy. What is that? <laughs> Child's made it. What are you? I'm a croc, obviously. <gasps> oh my god, you're a croc! I thought it was a croc. I thought it was got a moving sports band. Oh my god, if they don't sponsor you now, I, I, I really hope they do because they're my dream. Oh my god, you're at $29.95. You're yeah, an I'm absolute say, steal. And you're on yeah. sale. Oh, so she's a pink croc. Yeah. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Right, come here. Let me see you. Let me see you. Right, Lord Farquad. Lord Farquad. You need your moment. Please, Marcus, oh my goodness, you have absolutely, Mark. This is everything. He's been storming around the house with this cape This on. is everything. You. you love your cape. Lord Farquaad, you look very handsome. AJ, this is everything. I can't even cope. This is everything. And then we've got the sexiest couple on God's earth. We've got Day of the Dead. Veneera, can you just, do you know what, if you weren't so so nice, I'd hate you. Oh, look at you, look so good. Cammy, this is James Bond, Day of the Dead. So good. Oh my god, okay, this is a vibe. Okay, oh. Wait, 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 slow, 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 slow. Oh, it's so okay. sore. Wait, wait, it's alright, it's alright. Barely see what my sore. Oh, calm down. <laughs> my balls are just going. Ah, it's my ripping out. Wait, 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 it's caught in your hair. Wait, stop. It's ripping out. Now, is this not a vibe? This is so vibey. This is really sexy. Right now, we should have a little. I've got a little a hair cap on. Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, so okay. now. Oh, right, we need nannies to get the hair cap off. Okay. I've now got the rollers in. Oh, you're so, you're so clever. 
you are so clever. Okay. Right. Okay, right, we're gonna have to turn this off for a we'll moment. We'll report back in a minute. We'll be back. <laughs> not going on the YouTube. <laughs> I just know that's not going to make it on the YouTube. <laughs> 